us now and is an early investor in OpenAI. Jeff Lewis, founder and managing partner of Bedrock Capital, uh, which invested in OpenAI a year and a half before the company uh, released ChatGPT. Uh, Jeff, it's, uh, it's a big question. It's a big question about, and I guess we should have uh, we should have thought about this same question with biotechnology. Once we sequenced the genome, we should have thought, I wonder if we need not-for-profit here. Maybe we should have thought uh, the same thing about social media, given that that cat is out of the bag or that toothpaste is out of the tube, and there's been some harm from that. But can you really do that, Jeff? Can you really, can you really commercialize something as quickly as we need to do it because of all the benefits that we could get. Can you do that with a not-for-profit structure? Well, you know, it's a, great, it's a great question, Joe. I think OpenAI has experimented with something with something really unique. I'd expect them to continue to, continue to innovate on the structure now with this uh, exceptional transitional board that they've put in place, chaired by, of course, Brett Taylor, whose reputation in, in Silicon Valley is just uh, an 11 out of 10, just phenomenally uh, respected person sharing the board. I imagine that him and Sam and Larry Summers and Adam D'Angelo and the rest of the board are going to really think carefully about how to structure this. But, you know, I, I generally have a view, Joe, that you can't look at all of these technologies as the same. I'd say social media, you know, one could make an argument that perhaps that has been in some ways net bad for society, you know, versus something like I'd say an Amazon uh, e-commerce clearly not good. And, and I, so I don't think you can paint all of these breakthroughs uh, with the same brush. I, I, I agree with you. But I, I just am trying to figure out whether either, you, either you, uh, you go as quickly as you can to develop e these things. And that's what we do uh, a, a, as humans. And the best way is a capitalist structure where there's accountability and that involves a profit incentive. It's not going to go as quickly uh, with, with, with a not-for-profit. But, for example, and I use biotechnology again, there was a way that biotechnology, and I don't, I don't know whether you want to tie the COVID outbreak or the pandemic uh, to, to something that happened in a lab, maybe not. But certainly there was the potential to destroy all of humanity with, with, with biotechnology. I don't know if OpenAI has that same capability. Some people think, think that it does. But to commercialize it, you, you just got to, it's almost like you got to do everything first and then ask questions later. But is that the right way to do it? Well, I don't think that's what they're doing at all. I think they're asking uh, smart, this very important questions along the way. I mean, just for, let's talk biotechnology, Joe. Let's get there in one side. I just want to say one thing about Sam Altman, who's an entrepreneur I've known for, for 12 years. You, you, you know as well as I do, Joe, that a lot of these very senior leaders in business, you know, tend to be, we, we might call them sociopaths. Some could be maybe borderline, arguably psychopathic. Uh, Sam is the opposite of this. Sam is one of the most brilliant, but also full-hearted, kind-hearted, warm-hearted people I know. And he has led a team that has been asking all of these hard questions, every hard question that they could think of along the way. You saw this with the vote of confidence from the team after the failed uh, sabotage uh, exercise against him with over 700 of the less than 800 employees uh, signing a petition to bring Sam back. So this is a truly N of one, not only entrepreneur, but human, and, and they are asking the tough questions. Now let's talk about biotech. You know, I'd argue that one of the things that went very wrong, very wrong, preceding the COVID pandemic, okay, and the years leading up to the COVID pandemic, was the ways in which the US was uh, collaborating with China on uh, gain of function research. You know, if you, I don't know if you've done, went down the rabbit hole here, Joe, but the U.S. was collaborating with China in shocking ways on gain-of-function research. And, you know, we could debate did this leak from a lab or, or what happened there, but but that collaboration uh, certainly I don't think served us very well. The reality with AI is if the U.S. does not get there, if the U.S. does not win on AI, the emerging China alliance, the China, Russia, Iran, North Korea alliance, they're going to get there. This is not a question of, oh, should we go like too slow or nonprofit? This is an existential question yeah. for the future of the Western world, Joe. Uh, and, and you can make that same argument even with biotech and, and even with weaponizing biotech, that if we don't do it, someone, I mean, it's, it, it, it just, that takes us into another very bad uh, place, I think, Jeff, but it, it is the reality 
uh, of the world. Hey, hey, Jeff, Ro Khanna was just here, though, and he's concerned. He wants to know what the board saw, what, what made them uh, decide that they needed to fire Sam Altman to begin with, what, what the real concerns were behind the scenes. Are there safety issues? Are there something we don't know? He suggested that he might even try to hold hearings to bring the board forth and make them explain what they saw, what concerned them. Is that a problem as an investor? I'm, I'm, I'm all for it because I think this was a classic human power struggle, nothing more, nothing less. I think the right set of questions to be asking, Becky, quite frankly, might be a very different one. Like, who exactly were some of these folks on the board? You know, this, this Helen Toner person, uh, you know, seems like a lovely, a lovely human being. Uh, you know, was she a CCP agent? You know, I'd like to know the answer to that question. I'd like to was know. She a what? A, a, an agent of the oh. Chinese Communist Party. I, I would like to know the answer to that question. I'd hey, like Jeff, to know who the people were. You Just must be. I, I mean, a week and a half ago, you were faced with a situation where an investment you made in OpenAI almost went to zero. They fired Sam Altman. Microsoft said he was going to hire Sam Altman and just about anybody else from the team who wanted to come along. And that would have put your investment to zero. What were you thinking? What went through your head through all of this? You know, um, one of the mottos I live by, Becky, it's, it's very simple, but uh, it's very ancient. Enjoy the life. You have to enjoy the life. <laughs> Come on, tell and me what you were actually thinking. You cannot have been that zen thinking, through all of this. Because the thinking, rest of us were watching, like, what are you, what's going on? We didn't have any money on the line. What were you thinking? Look, in, in, here's what I was honestly thinking. In real estate, the number one rule, everyone knows it. Location, location, location. In technology investing, the number one rule, entrepreneur, entrepreneur, entrepreneur. I've believed in Sam for, you know, since I was a young, a young man, I continue to believe in Sam. And I had confidence that Sam and that extraordinary team would figure something out. You can ask figure anyone. Figure something that I out that saved your investment? I was, I was I had, I had a tremendous amount of levity over that over that period of time. I was feeling just fine. What happens if they went to Microsoft, though? You would no longer be involved. We, 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 we can't run a thought experiment on something that never happened. So, there were, yeah. there, well, look, there were reports at the time that investors were considering suing if that happened. Were you one of those investors? I mean, I can't comment on, on reports. I certainly, I don't, I don't speak to the media other than you folks at Squawk Box. So, any so of tell these us, would you have involved. sued if, if, if they walked out the door and Microsoft kind of I, I, had we this taken a, We would have taken a serious look at what that, what that board was up to and who those specific individuals on that board were and what their incentives were. We would have taken a very specific, very detailed look at what exactly was going on there and you know, whether it was uh, what exactly was happening. But there is certainly a set of claims we would have explored.